What's up, man? I'm Logan. Welcome to my home kitchen. We are making some meatloaf, just honey garlic, homemade breadcrumbs, most not to love, all right? It's absolutely amazing. Perfect for a weeknight. Got some meal prep going on if that's your thing. Otherwise, just enjoy the meal and let's get to it. The very first step we need to do is make some breadcrumbs. I like making big batches of breadcrumbs because I like to use them for other things. We're only going to use one cup's worth for the meatloaf recipe today. I'm going to cut the baguette into crouton sized pieces and put the cut pieces of bread into a mixing bowl, set it aside. One medium sized shallot is going to get a fine mince on it. Do the best you can to get the minced pieces of shallot similar in size. Once the shallot gets minced, place it into a small dish, set it aside. Give the six cloves of garlic a rough chop. Pick the leaves off of two stems worth of sage. I like to save herb stems. I put them in soups and two flavor stocks. I place them in a glass dish, put them on top of the refrigerator to dry them out. Roll up the sage leaves like you're making a stogie. Give them a nice fine julienne and then run your knife through once, maybe even twice more. Here's a quick recap of what we have. We have that chopped sage, minced shallot, chopped garlic, and half a cup of butter. I grab a large saute pan, heat it over medium high heat, add two tablespoons of oil, add all the butter, gently melt the butter until it starts to foam. This should take only about 30 seconds or so. Once it is foamy, drop in the shallot, give it a pinch of salt. The salt helps pull beautiful natural flavor that this shell has out. Stir the shallot, sweating it down for another one and a half, two minutes. Once the shallot has turned translucent, add the garlic. At this point in time, add the roughly chopped sage, and you want to stir those two together. Essentially, we're going to sweat the garlic down until it becomes very aromatic. That's going to take about one minute. Once the garlic has become aromatic, place the crouton cut pieces of bread into an even larger mixing bowl, top with that melted butter with the oil, the shallot, the garlic, and the sage. Gently toss to evenly coat. You definitely don't want to be afraid to use your hands to give this a gentle toss. I like feeling the bread to make sure that it is evenly coated with the melted butter and the oil. Once coated, place onto a baking sheet. Toss in a preheated oven 350 degrees and that's going to go for about 20 to 30 minutes. I rotate the pan halfway through the cooking time. Keep an eye on it as bread burns rather quickly. Place into a food processor, pulse it a few times to break it down into crumb sized pieces. Measure out one cup's worth, put it into a mixing bowl, set it aside. Let's keep hopping on and make this meatloaf. I grab the cheddar. This is one pound. I'm going to cut it in half and use the other half for other purposes. I want to break this down into about quarter inch cubes, doing my best to keep them somewhat uniform in size. This definitely is a good amount of cheddar cheese to put into a meatloaf, but it is delicious and it helps keep the meatloaf moist. Two eggs get cracked into a large mixing bowl. One teaspoon's worth of heavy cream goes in and whisk it until the egg yolks are fully broken down and mixed in thoroughly with the heavy cream. The heavy cream helps add a nice richness to the meatloaf and it helps keep it moist as well. In goes in the cube cheddar cheese. Drop in the meat, so it's going to be one pound of ground Italian sausage, three pounds of ground beef, I'm using 80-20. One tablespoon's worth of a good seasoned salt. I'll put my recipe in the description for you. Lastly goes in one cup of breadcrumbs. Go in directly with your hands. I'm using one hand at first to squish down all the ingredients. And then I go in with two hands to gently but thoroughly massage all the ingredients together. On a parchment lined baking sheet, I form the meatloaf into three individual loaves. Try to keep them somewhat uniform in size, that way they cook all evenly. If you have a scale, you could go ahead and measure out each loaf to make sure they all weigh the same. Bake at 400 degrees. And that's going to go for about 30 minutes. The internal temperature of this should reach 165 degrees. The cheese is going to really pop out, get nice and crispy on the outside of it, but it's going to have nice melted cheese on the interior. I love the crispy texture of the outside to the creaminess interior that it has. I'm not going to lie, this isn't the prettiest of meatloaves to look at, but trust me, the flavor that it has more than makes up for it. The crispy cheese on the outside and the melted cheese on the inside, absolutely banging. I love having meatloaf for meal prep. It goes really well with baked sweet potatoes. And as a vegetable, you could go with asparagus or broccoli. And it's really easy to reheat. Just put it on a plate, chuck it in the microwave for a good minute and a half, two minutes, and you're ready to go. This will definitely feed my family for a solid three to four days. Easy, delicious. You're going to love it. 